Uh, what up, what up? Got a call for a uh, walk-in, not holding temp. Came back on and started working, they said. That's because I plugged a bunch of wires in. Well, I'll show you, hold on. This is, this is a pretty wild one. I don't know why these comm wires were unplugged. And what happened is it took out the board. So I'll show you how I troubleshot this motherfucker. And it helps to have the manuals on you. If you have the manuals, it makes your life a lot easier because then you're not sitting there guessing. So at 32 degrees, the sensors on the Beacon 2s, they should be at uh, 32,650 kilo ohms. So if you take them out and you put them in ice, you want to do it that way. Or they have a chart for it too. But let's get in here. bitches and uh show you this one real quick before i gotta go to another walk-in and we'll i'll take you along for the ride for that one too yeah fuck it we'll walk in together all right i got the problem diagnosed with your walk-in we got to get a new control board but we'll handle that so i'm gonna trick it into running just the two so it'll maintain the temperature all right, just give me a few minutes. All right, so, calm error. This was unplugged. This was unplugged. This was unplugged. This was unplugged. I plugged them all in. Calm error. So, I'll just show you what I did real quick. You got your fuses. Good. Good. And now you can... Come over here and just make sure you have your 24 volts. Okay, make sure you got 24 right there. It's kind of hard to do. 24. Okay, this one goes into the controller. Now, take it into the EVAP. Into the evaporators. Uh, there's tech support number. Sorry, it's so close. What do you want from me? All right. So, set your meter up. So pretty much, what you can do is you can take a tran. You can take a transformer and you can put 24, 24 volts to this board, right? So this is your 24 volts right here. So if you have 24 right there, which we do. It should be lit up. So hold on, let me get my meter. Oh, I got my phone on some pizza. Hold up. Hey, I don't know if I'll be able to do this. It's too fucking hard. Right there. 24, you should have a display. No display. Board's bad. So, what it's gonna do is, it'll run the master, that's our master, all right? And it's not gonna run this one because of that board issue, right? So what you can do is, you gotta shut the power off, which we'll do here in a second. You take your multi in and your multi out put one to one, one to one. All right, so you take blue to red and green to uh, white, okay? But make sure you take a picture, fucking write it down. So I'm gonna write it on the inside right here, what I did. And then uh, this'll trick this one shutting down and it'll run the other evaporator. So let's verify that that works. Give me one sec. Super tag, super tag D. So. You take your in to your out. Your in to your out. Don't go in to in, out to out. Blue to red, green to white, whatever's wired there. In to out, so that thing's dead. You're gonna get some codes on the main controller. It's gonna tell you like super heat low and blah, 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 bunch of bullshit. Don't worry about it. 
what you want is cool and cool so now we got the two running normally it's like we just bypass that whole evaporator so until we can get the control board but that's a slick little way to do that on the beacon twos i put the tech support number you guys saw that um i'll show you what the control says Box sensor. So pretty much it's saying that it's not sensing the third one, and it should be. But that's okay, because we tricked it. So let's get on to the next walk-in and see what we can get into later. Found this guy on the road. He's looking for concrete. He has a saw and he's willing to cut it. Come to the Midwest, come to Illinois. But we will cut your concrete for a good fair price. We're concrete cutters. We do not fuck around. We drive around and search for the concrete. And we will cut it. We will cut it. We will. We don't fuck around when we cut the concrete. Anyways, let's go see what's going on with the walk-in cooler. Yay! I think it's a bad compressor. We're going to check your starting components. And we're going to make sure by a real I'm going to bring my mecker in and uh, that's annoying. Anyways, he's trying to find concrete to cut. I'm going to a cooler to fix and I don't give a fuck. Ah, ah. I'm kidding. I care so much. It's almost fucking unbelievable. So, anyways, let's go see what we can get into over here. Got the last one fixed up. Peace out. Man. Hey, that was easy. I couldn't get any video. It was in a school. I didn't want to film. So, Anyways, it was a walk-in cooler. The overload, the wire was totally burnt. Um, so the power was off. I just took the wire and just bypassed it off the overload and put it to the compressor. Then like two seconds, man, I had like 29 amps and the compressor was like smoking hot. So I was like, yeah, no. But what's funny is that my ohms test actually came out okay. The Megger said it was bad. Ohm said that it was actually okay. And I actually, I, uh, I have the Tecumseh app and you can put in there and it tells you exactly what your uh, ohm should be. And I was like, half ohm, one ohm off, which wasn't bad. I mean, you know, compared to spec. So and you're not going to be exactly on every time. But um, wasn't shorted to ground or anything. But like I said, as soon as we put power to that motherfucker, actually it got toasty hot. Check the wiring to make sure. Because I know sometimes if you wire those things wrong, they get... Um, um, within like a few seconds, you can toast it. So I verified wiring before. I'm going to give myself a little hot dog. Oh, look at it. That's what I need. Dentures. Nice. Look at that. The universe provides. God is good. So stay positive and rock and roll. And I think that's it for me both the day. So uh, tomorrow I got a. I met this guy over at a park district, randomly behind a fucking building, and he ended up calling the office to have me come out and take a look at a reach-in cooler and a reach-in freezer true so i'm pretty excited for that that's awesome i love shit like that because you already have like a relationship built dude be like what up you know i like that so long story short i'll see you tomorrow like subscribe and peace out baby i'm just bumping everything today so i got a call for this little guy get out your fan motor it's not coming on instead he cleaned the coil and then the fan motor took a crap it's got a really nice diagram it's a T23 F. So, this looks like we got a back condenser fan motor. I'm not going to plug it back in. There's no gauge ports or anything, but. It's shot. So, let me see if I have this one in the van. The one up there has got a back condenser fan motor. It doesn't have any pressure taps on it, so it probably hasn't had any leak issues. Um, this one does have a pressure tap. So, it's pumping down into a vacuum as soon as I turn it on. So I'm going to see. I had like 23 pounds uh, R134. So I'm just going to put a little shot in it and see what she does. See if I can get the suction to come up just a little bit. It's going to add... I can get it out of a suction or out of a vacuum. This one sounds like the compressor.
a little juice. 134 a you want to just kind of relax, chill with it. So good thing is I don't think it's a restriction. Um, it's responding to the little bit of gas that I'm putting in. So that's good. Just put in a little bit at a time. Uh, 134A on your EVAB. You want to look maybe, maybe 17 to 20. Somewhere around there. So I'm going to let this settle for a second. Probably just give it one more little juicer. But like I said, 134, you want to give it like 5, 10 minutes. Walk away. Come back. And then because it's pretty easy to overcharge on 134A, at least what I've noticed. So, um, but yeah, once I get it good, we're going to slide this out. There's a couple screws here. You can slide it this way or the other way. You want to slide it that way though, because this is the way the coil is. See how it comes down. So you want to slide it out this way. Two, three, eight screws. Um, let's go. Oh my little shot. Seventy. Ooh, cooking. Well, it's gonna suck in and blow out. Wee. All right. Leak detector. Gonna get the coil nice and tidied up. Brush gang. Ah, oh, yes. It's better. Put this under here. Get any water. So you want to really get in there. Get a nice cleaning on. We'll take the, probably take the fan motor out too and give it a cleaning. Or at least quote them. I'm just trying to get them up and going just for now. And then we'll get them some quotes. Let's see. That's a lot better. We'll go. Let's see. And that's it. I knew I cut myself on something. I felt it. Yes, I only carry two hoses. They're very short, and I just swap them because it makes it easier for me in my life. Okay. Okay. Alright. That's running good. Already dropping. Get this out of the way. And uh, get it shut down. Actually, I'm going to let it run for probably another 5-10 minutes. Um, just to let it cycle through with the oil. I don't want to shut it down just yet. Much better. And we're going to see if we can find the leak. Alright. And you just use your Allen key. Up or down? Down closes it. Up opens it. Okay. 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 All right. Let me give this a few minutes to run. All right, getting it all 
scrubby dubbied out. The usual. We can get some good airflow across there. Yes. gets in there. Alright, let me put this down so I can really get in there. Nice. So I got the motor. Boom. Take off the nut. Got the blade. Keep it the same way. Garbage. You got four screws right there. Take those off. It's gonna mount right there. Take the blade. I got this right there. I got the wires ready to go. And now we're gonna strip these. Winning. Grab your garbage. And then I'll take this one and I'll wire it in first. Make sure you use the right size. Oranges should be good. The oranges. Orangemos. And if you ever go from copper to aluminum wire, you gotta put some goop on there. They sell it at the parts house. If you guys don't know about it, it's like a heat goop. They use it on disconnects. Well, what I do is, I'll show you how I might do my wires. I do it like that. And then I come in. Clip them a little bit more. That this one on this side, nice and easy. Garbage. Zip tie. 
always make sure that you tape up your wire nuts real nice. Kind of start at the top, work it down, and come back up. Finish it right there. That's a good, good way. Good way of doing that one. Take it just like the factory did. Right there. Now like what I'm gonna do is so that it doesn't vibrate around. I'll go through there. You don't need it that tight, just enough to hold it. It's that, so I'm gonna get it screwed back down, we'll plug it. Sign motor! Hey, look at that. That's a good thing. A good thing. Am I crazy? Oh, no. I could be crazy. Is my amp lamp not working or something? What's going on here? You tell me I have no amps. Huh. I wonder if my amp lamp's fucked up. That don't make no sense. Hold on a second.